you know, the media has an insatiable hunger, fellows. And it, it must report 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And then it always has to cloak what it's reporting in the conventional morality of the time. Well, do you think you have now encouraged your fans to take drugs? I don't think it'll make any difference. You know, I don't think my fans are going to take drugs just because I did, you know. But the thing is, that that's not the point anyway. You know, I was asked whether I had or not. And then from then on, the whole bit about how far it's going to go and how many people it's going to encourage is up to the newspapers and up to you, you know, on television. I mean, you're spreading this now at this moment. This is going into all the homes, you know, in Britain. And I'd rather it didn't, you know. But you're asking me the question. You want me to be honest. I'll be honest, you know. But as a public figure, surely you've got a responsibility to lots and no, lots of No, it's you've got the responsibility. You've got the responsibility not to spread this now. You know, I'm quite prepared to keep it as a very personal thing, if you will, too. If you'll shut up about it, I will. I very much resent the kind of uh, media collaboration which tries to pass off the 60s as a drug-induced euphoria and a failure, and which has misrepresented uh, a lot of our efforts to young people, thinking that it didn't work. Uh, most of the people I know that are still living are carrying on their work. Their style has changed. It doesn't matter if they have long hair or short hair. Uh, but they're carrying on that kind of religious intention in their communities, uh, with nature. I don't think it's been a failure. I think the Reagan years are a temporary reaction by the forces that were maybe threatened a little too assiduously during the 60s to regroup and remind themselves that the world paradigm that they understood is not completely shattered. But in fact, it is shattered. The times, they are changing. And uh, I hope perhaps that if uh, succeeding generations of young people could be a little more compassionate and not judge their elders so uh, bitterly and leave the door open for more and more people, that that change will continue to escalate. And each time around the spiral, you get a little more wisdom and the, the group consciousness clicks just a notch higher, if you're lucky. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I've got to give you a little quote on that, if you like. Where's that book? Is love all you need? I don't know, really. I don't know what you need, you know. I'm just some fella, uh, and I, I haven't got any answers. You know, like, you know, we're all just individuals. I don't think anyone's got the answer. Love rules the court, the camp, the grove, the men below, and saints above. For love is heaven, and heaven is love. See, I certainly believe that. The idea is noble, and it was the idea that I think imbued that whole age. It is one of the main things you need, and if you don't have that, all the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter. Truth. You need truth. Love, uh, God is love, was one of the big expressions in the hate iceberg. You saw that button, you saw it on walls. But God is truth. You need truth. Not just love. You need love. You have to have a heart. You have to speak from your heart. But you need truth. You have to speak the truth. 
So, hey, I believe in that. I still will believe in it till I'm dead. Love is, uh, you know, I, it's hokey and boring and trite and creepy, but love is the answer. Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Well, I think the 60s was a very important period. It certainly was for me, and it was for the other fabs and anybody else who was living in that period who derived any pleasure or any slight awakening or even a smile. It was certainly good enough to be able to review and think about and I disagree with anybody who would say it was a lot of old cobblers, that it had no meaning and was a poisonous period. I think it was poisonous for people who weren't able to grow and accept that change was taking place. I read the news today, oh boy, about a lucky man who made the grave. In that kind of adventure, adventuring, uh, there will be casualties, and there were some few who didn't survive. Um, not many, th though some of them were, fam were famous. Uh, but uh, the year didn't die. No, the year lives on. I see it as a, a shining year. One of my children was born that year, and I must say, it does show. <laughs> it does. Seconds flat. I'm way upstairs and had a smoke, and somebody spoke, and I went into a dream. we're doing because you just can't stop you you know you find yourself doing it whether you want to or not being here now which is the important thing you know there is no past and there's no future time is a very misleading thing all there is ever is the now and um, we can gain experience from the past but we can't relive it and we can hope for the future but we don't know if there is one mm -hmm. 